The following program is made possible by friends and partners of the Quick Study Television Ministry. Thank you for your support. For the bad news. Bad news is actually good news. That and more coming up. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Rod Hembry. I'm Corey. And I'm Ryan. Now, here's what's happened. For some reason, you've landed on this channel. Whatever that reason is, you may not know, but this is the Walk Television program coming to you from our headquarters at BibleDiscoveryTV.com. And today, while you're here, we're going to focus on a great prophet. Zephaniah. And in this prophet, he's one of the minor prophets of the Bible, minor in size, but major in content. We're going to talk about the Lion of Judah a little bit and the good news for the bad times. Do you see a lion in the jungle? Is that good news or is that bad news? What do you think? We'll talk about that and more coming up in just a moment. But first, cosmic mysteries. Are there any lions in the sky, right? Oh, uh, I don't think so. Oh, okay. Well, What's going on? We're going to continue our discussion with the author of Alien Intrusion, Gary Bates. And over the past several weekends, he's given us some insight about this whole UFO phenomenon. Now, today I ask him specifically about these alleged entities people have claimed to have seen and even communicated with. Yeah, very good. Corey, Bible archaeology. We are taking a look at two ancient, famous, yet distracted kings. We're looking at Nebuchadnezzar and Solomon. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar and Solomon. Yes. Very interesting comparison. <laughs> the question of the day, the universal question of the day, ladies and gentlemen, where in the book of Genesis does the tribe of Judah, is the tribe of Judah referred to as the young lion's whelp? Do you know? Corey will give you a hint later. Today, you and I are going to focus on taking a look at two very famous ancient kings. Now, they were both famous builders, they were both very wealthy, and they both came to similar ends. The first one we're going to take a look at is Nebuchadnezzar, King of Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar, like many kings, received mixed reviews in the Bible. Interestingly, it is this pagan king of Babylon responsible for the destruction of the Jerusalem temple and the slaughter of many Judeans that is quoted praising God in his later life. Nebuchadnezzar was named after the Babylonian god of wisdom. According to Daniel and an inscription found in the late 1700s, Nebuchadnezzar took that to heart. He was the embodiment of power and supernatural wisdom, boasting in his greatest achievement, his beautifying of the city of Babylon. What we today call the East India House inscription parallels the boasts of Nebuchadnezzar recorded in Daniel. This black stone inscription was carved at the order of Nebuchadnezzar to record his glory. Daniel chapter 4 records the boast like this. Is this not Babylon the great that I have built by my vast power to be a royal residence and to display my majestic glory? Nebuchadnezzar's East India House inscription reads, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, renowned ruler, the heroic son of Nebuchadnezzar. The walls of Babylon I extended all the way around the city. I carefully fortified these defenses and fitted Babylon out to be a city of treasures. From the rest of the inscription, archaeological remains, and historical accounts, we also know Nebuchadnezzar built at least 
three palaces, a ceremonial path for Babylon's chief god, and several temples all lavishly decorated. He also built an enormous moat around the city and gates to the river Euphrates covered with bronze. An estimated 15 million baked bricks were used in his public building projects alone. This king of power may have gotten away with it too, if only he didn't have a prophet of God in his courts. Now, humans do not want to acquire the company of bad news or judgment, so many make fun of those who bring the bad news. They are mocked as doomsayers. Well, Zephaniah is one of them, and he bears the bad news for good reasons. Now, the ministry of this great, 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 great grandson of Hezekiah was deployed by God about 627 B.C. during a time of Josiah, the great revivalist king. So Zephaniah preaches of the impending judgment of God. He announced it and defined it and described it. So he invites repentance to those who listen and then seals his small book with promises of restoration to those who do repent and pay attention to God's call. Woe to her who is rebellious and polluted, to the oppressing city. She has not obeyed his voice. She has not received correction. She has not trusted in the Lord. She has not drawn near to her God. Her princes in her midst are roaring lions. Her judges are evening wolves that leave not a bone till morning. Her prophets are insolent, treacherous people. Her priests have polluted the sanctuary. They have done violence to the law. The Lord is righteous in her midst. He will do no unrighteousness. Every morning he brings his justice to light. He never fails, but the unjust knows no shame. I have cut off nations. Their fortresses are devastated. I have made their streets desolate with none passing by. Their cities are destroyed. There is no one, no inhabitant. I said, surely you will fear me. You will receive instruction so that her dwelling would not be cut off despite everything for which I punished her. But they rose early and corrupted all their deeds. Zephaniah chapter 3 verses 1 through 7. You know, what an amazing passage we study today from the great prophet called Zephaniah. I would remind you, we're going to study the first part of chapter 3, but let me remind you of something that you'll need to know for next week. And that is that Zephaniah 3.17 says, God will sing over his people with a loud, loud voice. Now that's interesting to me. Also, there are images here talking about Zephaniah speaking to God's people of wolves and lions. Now, when you see a lion in the forest, any lion trainer will tell you that a lion is going to sense whether or not you are someone who stands in authority. If you have the authority in you, then the lions will not touch you. This is an example that we see, of course, in Daniel in the lion's den. If the authority of the creator is in the lion is not going to touch you. But if the authority of the Creator is not in you, then the lion is going to touch you. So if you see a lion somewhere, you had better pray to God that you have the authority of God in you so that lion will not touch you. I want to take you today to Zephaniah chapter 3. We're going to look at the first couple of verses as we focus right on down through seven verses. We're going to study this because he's, he's prophesying, the prophet is, to the people of God. And here is what he says. Woe to her who is rebellious and polluted, to the oppressing city. She has not obeyed God's voice. She has not received correction. She has not trusted in the Lord. She has not drawn 
near to God. Now, there are four things there that would be good for you to memorize. That is, obey God's voice, receive His correction, trust in Him, and draw near to Him. Four things given there for us that we should do even as believers on this side of the cross. Verse 3, her prince... Princes in her midst are roaring lions, and her judges are evening wolves. They leave not one bone until morning. Now, listen very carefully to the power connection. Here it is. Just because correction is given does not mean that it is received. We must accept God's ways wholly in our lives to have His blessing and therefore have His authority. Beloved, God's correction must be accepted. God's correction from His Word must be received. There are many people who make mental assent to God's Word, and they say, yes, that's right in God's Word, but they don't take their heart to the agreement of God's Word, and therefore they don't take their lifestyle to the heeding of God's Word. That's very important. And again, notice the prophet, the four things that he says, obey His voice, receive his correction, trust in the Lord, and draw near to God. Those are the things that Zephaniah says you didn't do, uh, people of God, and so therefore you're in this condition, literally, of authority crisis or moral anarchy. Well, the prophet goes on in chapter 3, verses 3 to 5, and he says, her princes in her midst are roaring lions, and her judges are evening wolves. That Leave not a bone till morning. Verse 4, her prophets are insolent, treacherous people. Her priests have polluted the sanctuary. They have done violence to the law of God or the word of God. The Lord is righteous in her midst. He will do no unrighteousness. Every morning he brings his justice to light and he never fails. But the unjust knows no shame. The unjust are ignoring it. Which brings us to the second power connection. You know, God does not simply leave or remain silent in the midst of our evil. God brings judgment. It is the great apostle Peter who says, let judgment begin at the house of the Lord. Now, we do not expect those who do not believe in God and those who do not honor his word to have any sort of respect or desire to be righteous, but we have those in the house of God who claim to be disciples of Christ, who claim to be believers, those are the ones that God is speaking to now. And it's interesting because that, that, that could happen inside the house of God is terribly disturbing to me. That it could happen inside of my heart disturbs me. So Zephaniah the prophet reminds us of the things that we need to do when there's moral anarchy in our life. That's because we have not accepted God's righteousness. Let's read verse 6. I have cut off nations. Their fortresses are devastated. I have made streets desolate with none passing by. Their cities are destroyed. There is no one, no inhabitant. I said, surely you will what? You will fear me. You will receive my instruction so that her dwelling would not be cut off despite everything for which I punished her. But you know what? They rose up early and corrupted all their deeds again. Now this brings me to something I really want to drive home in the last few minutes of, of today's power supply session. And that is this. Beloved, economic disaster, civil unrest is a form of God's judgment upon a city or a culture or even a nation. Why is that? Because if we reject the biblical values that bring into play honor of authority, that bring into play the fact that we simply don't live isolated, we're not an island to ourselves. You see, God's word connects our actions and our words directly to consequences. That's important. We need to recognize through God's word that our actions have consequences. So the church, when the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in a nation or culture begins to wander out of God's word, that has consequences. And we are reaping the consequences of the last five decades of the church wandering from the tenets of biblical reality. Now, I'm speaking to the church. I am not speaking to those who are not part of the church or those who have no interest in the belief in Jesus Christ, but I'm speaking to those who call themselves Christians, who call themselves disciples of Christ. We've wandered. 
in the last five decades. We must come back and return to God, and our actions will echo through society. You and I are going to take a look at our second ancient famous king. We're going to take a look at King Solomon, who, of course, was king of ancient Israel before Israel split into two separate nations. Take a look at this. For many, the history of King Solomon in the Old Testament must be written off as fanciful exaggerations of a much lesser reality. Gold-plated temples and palaces with gold-covered floors and ceilings, an ivory throne overlaid with gold, extravagant precious metal articles for both religious and personal use, and large decorative golden shields are just a few of the wonders of Solomon's proposed kingdom. But what does history say? We may want the Bible to be lying and thus to discredit its uncomfortable theology, but what if it's telling the truth? The 10th century BC, the time of Solomon, hasn't enjoyed as many dramatic finds as other time periods. But this is a testament to the recycling nature of ancient builders. When short on space, it's often more productive to renovate previously existing structures, dismantling and reusing the old building materials. Even still, if Solomon's splendor has historic credibility, it should fit well into surrounding ancient cultures. There should be some affinity, some hint that this isn't myth. In fact, Solomon's practices do go well with ancient cultures and are far less crazy than some would have us believe. Personal bowls, goblets, and plates of gold are known to have been in use with many ancient cultures. Decorative golden shields show up in lists of taken goods and reliefs of sacked temples in the records of Assyria. A little-known practice of the ancient Egyptians was the same as that of Solomon, overlaying pillars, rooms, and articles with plates of pounded gold, secured in such a way that the gold could be easily removed. The most famous intact examples come from the tomb of King Tutankhamun. We even have texts from the kings of Assyria explaining how they overlaid their temples with gold. Solomon's lavish throne of ivory decorated with plated gold finds parallels all over the ancient Middle East in destroyed remains of ivory couches, beds, and wall decorations. In the month of September, Quick Study TV offers unique and inspiring Bible commentary on the 12 minor prophets and the four major prophets in the Bible. The late Dr. Ron Hembry brings us closer to the world in which they ministered, revealing amazing unknown facts about the truth of their prophecies and how they affect us today. Now, all of this commentary and more are offered in audio MP3 format this month on an exclusive beautiful USB key drive. It fits into your computer, your carport, even CD players with USB supports. You can save the files to your computer, copy them to your MP3 player, iPod, iPad, or iPhone. And this beautiful key drive featuring the audio teaching of Dr. Ron Hembry on the Prophets is our special gift to you this month for a suggested donation of $25 or more. When you participate in giving to Quick Study Television, you're keeping us broadcasting. So all donations are used for the production of Quick Study TV and the Bible Guide and many other teaching tools. Thank you in advance for your much needed gift. To send, send to P.O. Box 150, Marysville, Pennsylvania, 15668-0150. The phone number is 724-733-8336. In Canada and the rest of the world, send to P.O. Box 456, Orangeville, Ontario, L9W5G2. And our phone number is 519-940-8338. 
The heavens declare the glory of God. That's what the Psalms say. But some people have taken that glory and switched it out to some well, construed ideas. Here to help us learn more is Ryan with Cosmic Mysteries. You know, many people have claimed to have had experiences where they have actually seen and communicated with alleged aliens. Well, what are these beings, and what are their intentions? Author of Alien Intrusion, Gary Bates, gives us some insight. You know, what's uh, been interesting, since my book was published in 2005, uh, I've literally had hundreds of people contact me. I've met personally dozens and dozens of people who've seen things and have actually had these abduction experiences. And overwhelmingly, I want again, I want to say, don't just believe me, uh, read the book, you'll see the, the research of Harvard psychologists who've interviewed these people, and they will tell you that they're traumatized, they're damaged, even though the messages say that you know, these, uh, these uh, alleged alien benefactors are here for our greater good. These perp people are treated nothing more than, than playthings. Uh, there are some horrible um, sexual things that are perpetrated upon uh, humans or what they believe is perpetrated upon them. And quite simply, the, the researchers, the psychologists have shown that uh, by and large these people suffer post-traumatic stress syndrome, syndromes, the same sort of stress that war veterans have when coming back from overseas. So, you know, that doesn't really fit in with the idea that they're highly evolved, benevolent beings here to help us. In fact, they're malevolent. That's what happens. People are damaged and traumatized. And we can actually unpick this area uh, by understanding that they actually lie to us. They tell us about things that we demonstrably know are not true. You know, for example, 30, 40, 50 years ago, they used to tell us that they were from Venus or Mars. Now, we've explored those places, and certainly they're hostile to life. So now they say they're from the Pleiades or Zeta Reticuli or something like this where we cannot test their claims. And all that we keep doing is just pushing it further out to keep the ruse going. Uh, and these people, as I said, that are damaged, uh, sometimes they become evangelists also for their cause because they are hoodwinked into thinking that they're on some great cosmic mission. As I said, it becomes a religious experience for many of them. And one of the great difficulties we have in talking to these folks is the power of the experience. See, I can't go to them and say, well, you know, you really weren't abducted by an extraterrestrial, because they'll just say, no, I was. I know what really happened to me. And I want to say to people out there, I'm not denying the experience. You know, you may have had an experience, but I believe you need to look under the surface of the experience, because quite simply, if you are told something that is not true, well, the person that told you that is a liar. <laughs> I don't know how much more, more direct I can be, but if somebody lies to you, they are a liar. And so therefore, you know, maybe you should be thinking twice about trusting some of the other claims uh, before, you, before you really start to trust them. For more interviews like these, you'll have to go online to the observatory, which is located on BibleDiscoveryTV.com. This is a place on the website dedicated totally to the field of astronomy. It's a place where we showcase the handiwork of the Almighty Creator. Of course, I also highly recommend getting a copy of Alien Intrusion, which you can find at creation.com. In fact, uh, it was like, I don't know, what is it, top 50 or something yep. on Amazon? Best seller, top time. 50. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a really good book. I've read it. A lot of good research uh, and solid research in this book. So every Christian or every believer, disciple of Christ who is interested in this should really consider that and make that book part of their regular reading. Okay, it's time for the universal question. I'm not going to overdo it with, uh -huh. you're looking at me like I'm going to give them too many hints. Just saying, I'm you not going to give them, you're not going to give me the chicken speech, are you? I'm not, I won't read you the chicken speech. Okay. No. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's because we came, it came up on the behind the scenes channel. Anyway, here is the <laughs> question for today. The universal question, ladies and gentlemen, where in the book of Genesis is the tribe of Judah referred to as the young lion's whelp? Where is that? Now, Corey... We need a hint, okay? So what okay. is the hint? Near the end. That's the hint. <laughs> Near the end. That's a, that's a better hint than I've ever given. Really? That's like an obvious hint. The book hint. starts with P? Really? <laughs> I already 
remember that <laughs> oh, yeah. a couple weeks ago. Yeah, that happened three weeks ago, I yeah. admit it. Okay, well, anyway, it's a really interesting <laughs> prophecy. But the point that I'm trying to make is that you should check it out for yourself. If you think you know the answer, go to BibleDiscoveryTV.com. You can comment on the program as well. And we'd like to hear your comments. As long as you treat everyone on the message board with dignity and respect, we'll leave your comments up. Don't have to agree with us. Don't have to be believers in Jesus Christ. Just make your comments with dignity and respect and no profanity, and you'll be, your comment will stay up there. All right, now, we're going to go to the page I want to show you, which has our address on it, and this is our Bible guide. Now, our Bible guide is the print companion to this program, but we have every day covered, a reading assignment for every day. This is a weekly program, and this particular program is here uh, because we do five days a week on Quick Study, but what we want to show you is that every day is covered on this Quick Study Pocket Guide. If you would like a copy of this to go through the Bible, you know what? Next year it's going to be called Wise Guys and Wise Up. Study Wise. That's Very what it's going to be called. Cool. We're finishing out this year, getting ready to go into the New Testament, P.O. Box 150. Mersville, Pennsylvania, 15668-0150. Overseas and in Canada, P.O. Box 456, Orangeville, Ontario, L9W5G2. Now, uh, the guide, you have to ask for it. If you don't mm -hmm. ask for it, we'll be confused and we won't know what to do. We'll curl up in a fetal position in the office. We won't know what to do. Don't, get con don't confuse us, please. Tell us, yes, I want the Bible guide. Well, we may not curl up in the fetal position. Probably not. That's pretty extreme. Yeah. 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 Sorry. <laughs> you get the idea. There. You're, you're okay. Good. Speaking of uh, extreme, here's Facebook. We're on Facebook. Got lots of friends there. Do a lot of fun stuff on Facebook. Full-length programs, high quality, HD quality, full-length programs on YouTube. HD. Lots of people. Yeah, well, you know, we put the Apple TV files up there. It's pretty good. That's awesome. And we're going HD in, 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 in next year, right, Ryan? <laughs> That's right. Our produ director of production. We're also on Twitter. <laughs> and if you want to know more about who we are and how to find us, you know what you do? Just go here, BibleDiscoveryTV.com. That's Bible Discovery TV. Don't forget the TV. The TV is important. BibleDiscoveryTV.com. Also, our seminary. A new mm, seminary. Yes. Jasmine's over here in the studio audience with us today, and she's a very important part of that because she tries to keep me straight. So, the seminary. Go there and check it out. We're taking students now. Hey, thanks for joining us today on the Walk Television program. I did not want to leave without telling you the truth about what I believe the Bible says. Well, the Bible says that all of sin and come short of the glory of God. You say, well, that's not fair. I'm not a pretty good guy, Rod. Well, the problem is the entire world and all of us who are human beings are, are under the sin curse because of what our first parents did. And we inherited that down the line. You know, but God was not content with that. He he looked upon us and realized that we needed his help. So he gave his only begotten son, that's Jesus Christ, to die on the cross and, and to raise again for whatever creed, whatever culture, wherever you were born, he did this for all humanity. And he chose you to have the gift of eternal life and also to have power to overcome the sin nature inside of each of us, to make the world a better place and to give us a better world in the future. I encourage you to come to Jesus Christ today. That's the truth. That's what the Bible says, and, and that's what I believe. Thank you for joining us today on The Walk. Check this out. The Bible Discovery TV 24-7 streaming network with Adrian Rogers, Dr. Chuck Misler, Ravi Zacharias, and more on a regular basis plus quick study is now on the Roku box that you can buy almost anywhere. Make your TV smart. Check out iPoint TV app. Look for Bible Discovery TV.